Well, welcome back to Rough Restos for the eighth episode on the M113 conversion to the Capri. Um, obviously, last episode, massive milestone. I've still got a massive grin from that. That thing is, um, oh, it's looking beautiful. I'm so happy. But, obviously, this is far from the end. We've still got so much to do. Um, and I'm looking forward to it. I wish I just had more time to do it. And then, you know, but happens. So, yeah, right. Big issue at the minute is I need to also crack on with another project, but I can't because this thing's a pain in the ass to move. It doesn't move because the ARB doesn't fit, so then it doesn't tie the front suspension in. So you try and move it, yeah. And I've got no steering because the exhaust manifold fouls the steering arm, so obviously that's, that's no good. <sighs> so, I mean, to solve the steering, I might have to remove the engine. Because I yeah, because the exhaust manifold nuts are a bit rotten. But, to at least get it tied together, would be a massive help, we can fix the RB. Now, I know we've previously discussed anti-dive kits and such, and that was what I was going to do, until all of a sudden my bright friends reminded me that the anti-dive kit obviously comes straight across, and if the ARB doesn't fit, an anti-dive kit won't fit. No. So I can't use an anti-dive kit. Um, I need to basically do similar, but I need to make up, I can't have some link in between them. Um, which is a shame. I might still have to make something to do that at some point to try and add a bit of extra bracing. But for now, just to better move it around at least, I need to sort of replicate the blocks I made for the steering, yeah, the, the, the cross member, and make the same for the ARB. Um, which is a bit of a pain because they also div it down in. So basically I need to, I need to close that gap. That could be fun. Um, the only other issue I can see here is when I do that, it might, it's gonna pull the ARB a, f a few more mil forwards. Um, I guess until, with the cars load or what, I don't know what the geometry's gonna work out like. So all I'm gonna do for now is I'm gonna do it and then we'll deal with the consequences afterwards. Um, but yeah, so that's the plan now. I've got some, I think it was 20 mil box here. Should be ample. I um, don't know if I can try and show you guys. But we'll do that. I've now gained quite a bit of clearance. And I can shave off the fins a little bit on the sump as well for a bit more clearance. Um, so I'm going to convert that now into two spacers and we'll see if that's going to work. Please say it is. And whilst we're here on this episode, I think we're going to start on the shifter setup because I need to get that measured out and then remove the gearbox to do it. So. Oh, good fun. Let's crack on. Those to do. Now things might have progressed a bit here, it might have got a bit carried away. Um, and what we got here is these rather interesting looking spacers. Nothing special, but they are essentially a kind of replica. Um, if you were to buy engine mounts at Lidl, or ARB mounts here, then yeah, that's my replication. But, so you've got to have this indented part because the ARB bush sits in that. So it needs to have that to clamp down properly. Um, I don't actually know if it fit yet. I've, on there I've gained about 15 mil of clearance. <laughs> so I haven't actually tried them. <laughs> um, I just got carried away and I made them. So I think the next idea is for me to bolt these up a minute and see if it actually bolts together. If it does, I'm finally gonna be able to push this back and forth without too much hassle, he says. We got an ARB fitted. 
with an M113 sitting in there as well. Bang in. Bit of pain in the ass. Um, so here's the spacer blocks I made. They actually work spot on in the end. I did have an issue with them. It was hitting the sump, only just. Well, I say hitting, it was touching. Um, so I got the grinder out and done a bit of clearancing. And um, we've got a good, oh, probably a good eight mil gap around it now. So that's not gonna be any issues whatsoever. Um, yeah, I'm pretty happy with that. So now the wheels are back in one position. So I can actually start to see what ride height is gonna be. Well, minus all the weight it's missing. Um, yeah, so that's one thing ticked off. Next on the list is gonna have to be to try and get some actual steering so I can move it. Um, issue being currently, here's my steering shaft, here's my other steering shaft, and there's the exhaust. So let's just work out a minute. And obviously I've spaced this down now 25 mil, so I might have to extend the steering shaft. Um, I know it has got a bit of play, but probably not enough. Um, I don't look like the look of removing that manifold. Them nuts look a bit too, too, yeah. So, I don't know what I'm gonna do yet. I think it's gonna be a case of just maybe try and chop this out whilst the engine's in the car, rather than put the engine in and out, in and out. I don't know yet. Um, obviously the exhaust is, yeah. And that way I could actually start to mock up. If I can do that, I can start to mock up where the downpipe's gonna come back off this, because it needs to come back off here really somewhere and avoid this steering shaft. Other than that, there should be plenty of room. And I see this side, same sort of thing, it needs to come off down here and then there will be plenty of room. But we're making progress and I like progress. So what I've done here is I've butchered part of the exhaust manifold off of plasma. Um, and then that's allowed me to refit the steering uh, coupler. Obviously it's too short as expected but only by about 10 mil plus. So that shaft will need extending, but for now I've got steering again. And then I thought I'd try to fit the prop. So I went to go bolt the prop up to the back of the manual gearbox. Realized it wouldn't fit. Hmm. So I looked at it and the, that was on the back of the manual gearbox, that size donut. That's what come off the um, V8 auto gearbox. Ah. So the output shafts of the gearbox are smaller and the donuts are smaller. So fine, if you're gonna do this, if you get a V6 prop, then it'll fit. The V8 prop does not fit straight on to the V6 gearbox. Obviously I had the V8 prop because of my donor car. So I started the auto gearbox. So I used a 30 mil 12 point socket. Ideally you need a deeper one than that. At minimum, it needs to, if it's a shallow one like that, it needs to be a three quarter inch because it the way it fits over, and even that's a pain in the ass. So get a deep 30 mil 12 point, and you'll be fine. Change the shafts over. Ouch! It's a torch there, and it seems to fit. Although it does seem to fit further back on this gearbox, um, but it does fit. So next step is going to be this prop. Uh, that way there around, yep. There were donuts, sorry, not a prop. So as your donut needs to fit on here with the little lugs locating in. Ooh. He says, one-handed, not as easy as it could be. Yeah, like that-ish. So that's that one on there now. And my prop now should fit onto there, hopefully. And then I've got to work out how and where it's going to sit back here. This is where I'm not sure now. I'm obviously assuming the geometry from the gearbox back, that prop should be parallel. So, yeah, next challenge, ready to start. I've been playing with the prop, um, uh, which has not gone to plan. Um, so we've got the uh, bigger V8 output flange now on the gearbox. And I offered it up and realised that we're not gonna it's not gonna work. So my original plan of mounting it to gearbox, keep it straight, uh, you know, put in a new centre bearing which I've got over there, and then get a UJ put on the end and the outless flange, isn't gonna work. Why? Because this UJ needs to be on this side of the sliding joint. Else it's not gonna work. Because obviously this is gonna slide in out on the rear dip, on the rear axle. Perfect. But this UJ is obviously gonna move because of that. Or it's going to be restricted move. It's going to have restricted movement because of this joint here, and it's going to tear this joint apart. Because <sighs> that joint obviously needs to move with the axle. 
So that joint, if that joint was there, like it is on a Capri one, fine, it would work, but it's not. <laughs> um, so I've been racking my brain, going through all different ideas and such, and I think I'm going to have to bite the bullet and get a prop made, which means I need to get a sight made that goes from the free box flange, or uses this, comes off to a sliding joint, a UJ, and then back to the axle, ideally in one piece. Ah, joys. But it's, it is what it is. So that's another nice expense, but at least I'll get a proper prop at works. So I'm going to bite the bullet. So that's enough playing with props now. I best measure up and see where the shifter needs to go. Um, I guess I need to measure from the the bush point there back to where I want the shifter sticking out the Capri, so center of the gap. Then the box can come out and we can work out how on earth that's going to work. Well, it's been a few weeks and um, I'm deciding to end the video off here currently um, because the Capri isn't in a workshop at the moment. It's been pulled out for a, another project which will be coming to the channel. I guess next week. Um, something I've never worked on before. Something that requires a bulkhead and a chassis replacement, if that gives you any clues. Um, kind of excited, and not excited for that one, so we'll see how it goes. Um, but the Capri, prop shaft wise, it's in hand. I'm currently speaking with a couple of companies about getting a prop shaft made up. There's still a few decisions yet, whether it's going to be one piece, two piece, and a few bits like that. Um, obviously, because the car's not on a ramp, I can't do a shifter. And in this box, I've got something which I'm quite excited to show you guys, but at the same time I'm not. So this is the Radiator for Capri, what I've gone with. Um, in the spirit of this build, it's something a bit different. Um, I like different. But, problem is, I ordered it from Czech Republic, from a company that supplies the aluminium radiators, I think made in China. Problem is they didn't send the one I ordered. Um, it is the correct one, but it's not the thickness I ordered. And I've just paid £47 import fees on it and the cost of radiator and so far the Chinese company are um, offering me well they've offered me $15 and they offered me 20 euros back no I, I kind of want the radiator I ordered so yeah we're currently in um, negotiations on that so I'm not going to show you guys yet ideally until I've got the right one or I know what I'm doing but that's quite exciting um yeah so it's going to be another few weeks now before we get Capri content so you may notice I put up some golf content the other week. Now that was actually footage I'd recorded when building the golf, but never got around to editing. So if any of you guys are interested in me pulling out more of the footage of the golf build, um, I've got loads of it. Obviously from the hole, from the painting, the reassembly, the interior stuff, there's a lot to that car. Um, and if you want me to edit some up, I will edit it up and release it. Um, poor Tempo Hennix Range Rover, that's, that's a future project. And um, if anyone wants to buy a BMW M62 4.4 litre V8 on only 90k miles, I've got one here. Everyone wants to buy it, no one wants to actually arrange a collection or pick it up. Um, I'm happy to post it for the UK, just I've been messed around with that twice already. Why? Why? So yeah, um, I'm going to stop rabbiting on now. Sorry for the short video or the lack of finishing things in this video, although we did get the ARB spaces built and they have helped tremendously. Um, the car's sitting nicely now, perfect. So yeah, if you guys are enjoying the content then um, please tell me what you think. Please tell me if you think I should do something differently, if I can do anything better, um, if it's alright. And um, yeah, like, comment, subscribe, all the usual stuffs. And with any luck, I'll see you guys next time. Thank you for watching, I've been Jordan. Cheers.